Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. Welcome to the next video. Guys, in this video, I'll be talking about support vector machines or SVM for short. So SVM were originally developed in 1960s, then they were refined again in 1990s and now they're becoming very popular in machine learning because they're demonstrating that they can be very powerful because they're somewhat different from the other machine learning algorithms. So for now, let's understand how SVM actually work. So, all right, so here what we got as a usual points on a two dimensional space and for a simplicity sake, we got just two columns x1 and x2 and we got some observation, right? And uh, uh, now we, we have to derive a line that is going to separate them, these two classes, right? So, how we can actually separate these points, right? In other words, the decision boundary is going to be very important for us going forward when we start adding new points and that's a point of our classification. Right. So, uh, how we can do that? The very first thing we can do is to draw, draw a line right uh, in a two dimensional space and then we can say anything to the right will be green, anything to the left it will be uh, red. Right. So, and a new point, if the new point falls somewhere on this space, we will know right away it's red or green because we will know where it falls. However, we can also do another, another way like we can have a diagonal line like that and we can actually draw some more diagonal lines like that. So, there are a lot of different lines and then uh, that we can create that will achieve the same result they will, they will separate our points to two classes. But at the same time they all in future will have some different consequence so that when we add new points depending upon uh, where that point will fall it either be classified as the green zone or the part of red. So, we want to find the optimal line right we want to find their optimal line that's what SVM is all about they are about finding the best line or the best decision boundary that will help us separate our space into classes so now let's find out how the SVM actually searches for this line so well the line is searched through the maximum margin so you can uh, here you can see a line this is a line the SVM uh, would draw so basically it's a line that separate these uh, two classes of points at the same time it has a maximum margin which means the distance, uh, so this line is drawn equidistant from this point and this that's a margin. So, some of these two distances has to be maximized, right, for this line to be result of SVM. So, and these two points are actually called as a support vectors. These two points actually called as a support vectors. Why they're called as support vectors, right? Because these are the two, uh, these are the two points who are supporting this whole algorithm. Even so, even if you get rid of all the rest of the points, it will not uh, like impact the algorithm. Why? Because the other points don't contribute to the rest of the algorithm. Only these two points are contributing. Therefore, they are called as a supporting vectors, and you can call them a supporting points. But in reality, they are vectors. And this is why, because in the uh, multi-dimensional space, when you have more than two variables, you can have three. Uh, you can have more than two variables. Can be three, ten, five, hundred variables each point is actually no longer a point because you can't visualize it on a two dimensional plane or even on the three dimensional space. Therefore, each of those points that we see here is considered as a as a vector in a multi dimensional space. So, the more general term for the points we see here are called as a vectors. So, hence, so hence we uh, these two specific vectors are the one supporting uh, kind of uh, like uh, this this boundary this decision boundary or this way we are building this algorithm that's why they are important and that's why this whole algorithm it's called as a support vector machine so now what else do we have here we got the line in the middle which is called as a maximum margin hyperplane or the maximum margin classifier so in the two dimensional space it's just like a classifier just a line but actually in the multi dimensional space it's called as a hyperplane and then you have got the green and red dotted lines as well, right? The green one is called as a positive hyperplane and the red one is called as a negative hyperplane. It doesn't really matter in which order you name them, just uh, the point in which uh, is that one of them is positive, one of them is negative, right? And or we can say anything on the right, it's called positive, it's called, it's classified as a green category. Uh, anything uh, to the left is classified as a negative category or red category, right? So now let's imagine you're trying to teach an algorithm how to distinguish between apple and oranges and how to classify a fruit into either an apple and orange, right? So this is the uh, standard, uh, standard kind of a machine learning problem, right? So in our case, you can see we can uh, you can see like we are having oranges. On the left, we have apples, right? Now we have these two classes available, right? So what 
machine learning algorithm will do is that it look it look uh, at most of the apples the apples and most oranges the orange they would look at the most stock standard common type of apples and most stock standard common type of oranges now the case is uh, let's suppose we are having this case available this is what uh, this is what, what the svm is different from others because in this case you can see instead of looking at the uh, the standard pictures of apples or oranges let's suppose we have a apple available and in this case this no it's not of the like red color right it's of the color orange right now it means it's very easy to infuse this apple as an orange right so in the same way you can see on the right side as well we can have the orange which is of green color right so this is what the svm is all about right uh, these are the uh, this is what makes the svm uh, like uh, very different from other algorithms how because uh, the those are the those are the support vectors you can see these two are the support vectors in this case right this one is a support vector here this one is one the support vector here right so these are very close to the boundary and these and they are very close to the apple or the red one or they would be very close to the green ones or and the orange or the green mark here would be very close to the red ones and therefore the support vector machine in this sense you can think of it it's like a it's a so svm can be think like it's a very extreme type of algorithm it's a very rebellious type of algorithm because uh, we can say it's a very risky type of algorithm because it looks at very extreme case like it's a very extreme case right because generally the uh, orange uh, this this uh, apple is of treated as a red color right but here we, it is of type orange it's a color is orange in, a, in the same case in the case of this as well normally we have a color orange but now it's of a green color so that's why we calling it as a very rebellious very risky type of algorithm because it looks at very extreme case which is, which is very close to the boundary and it uses that to construct the analysis and that in itself make the support vector machine very special to a different to the most of the other machine learning algorithms right i hope you must have understood uh, this simplest of the introduction uh, that how machine learning this svm works in case if something is not clear kindly comment on this video uh, in the next video i'll be coming up with the uh, the implementation part that how we can implement svm in a r studio thanks for watching guys see you next video